Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about reawakening the spine. So it's been a while since I did one of these. I came across an article I read that uh, inspired me. It's always good to see, you know, breakthroughs. I do sometimes do like yearly breakthroughs and things like that. You can go look at my playlist and the sciences. That's where this will be. I will give credit for the article and post a link to it in my descriptions. Some of these links actually have a listen to button so you can listen to them instead of me bastardizing the uh, English language. In any case, the article is called Spinal Cord Implants Help Paralyzed People Walk Again. It's by Teresa Carey and it's from the Freethink website. Again, I'll put the link in the description if anybody's curious. And again, I'll read this word for word, and sometimes I interject my own two cents and talk about things here and there. But just to set this off, I'd like to say I do um, find awe-inspiring things in some of these scientific breakthroughs. But you got to, you know, at least base it in a, you know, real-time type thing. And what I mean is a lot of these articles are headline things. And yes, you can go and look for the peer-reviewed studies and such. But when you look at some of the top people talking about it, instead of the article making it seem like it's right around the corner, it could be 10 to 15 years down the line. So keeping that in mind, these are the things that I try to look at when I see some of these articles. But this one, I'm going to admit I didn't verify too much, although I did check for external links that led to certain things. But I just felt good about it, and I wanted to you know, do a podcast on it. So... Again, this is Implants and Transplants are Offering New Hope for Restoring Patients' Ability to Walk. It's by Teresa Carey from the Freethink site, and I'll start now. Michael Roccati was in a motorcycle accident in 2017. It left his lower body completely paralyzed. Now, thanks to breakthrough technology, he can walk again. It is one in a wave of fresh discoveries offering new hope for people with severe spinal cord injuries. In Riccati's case, scientists created a spinal cord implant that uses electrical stimulation to reawaken and reconnect spinal neurons. Announced the same week, scientists nearly 2,000 miles away successfully engineered 3D human spinal cord tissues and implanted them in paralyzed lab animals, restoring walking strength and stability. Both studies are promising signs that many people with paralysis today could, one day, walk again. Now, this is what I mean. This makes it seem like it's right around the corner, but when it gets to the end, you realize they need more human trial stuff. You know, It could be further down the line, but I'll continue. Reawakening the Spine A team of researchers at the École Polytechnique Federale de Louisiane, okay, whatever, EPFL, created Riccati's 6 centimeter spinal implant. It was placed in his spinal cord and attached to individual nerve fibers, mimicking the action of the brain in sending electrical impulses to his muscles. Nerves in a healthy spine transmit signals from the brain to the legs, but after an injury to the spine, those signals are weak or non-existent. The muscles in the legs may be healthy enough to walk, but without the brain signaling them to move, they remain immobile. The new implant can help patients walk again by acting as a signal booster. A computer carried by the patient triggers the electrical impulses. Although his first few steps were labored and required support bars, it only took a few months of rehabilitation before Riccati could walk with a standard walker. Now, he can walk nearly a kilometer without stopping and stand for a few hours report science alert. Again, some of these words are highlighted in blue. They'll take you to other articles. I'll continue. Riccati and two other patients in the study all saw improvements in their mobility, including the ability to walk, climb stairs, swim, or canoe. One was even able to become a father. Quote, I stand up, walk where I want to, I can walk the stairs. 
It's almost a normal life, Riccardi told the BBC. There's a video that you can watch. The team published their work in the journal Nature Medicine. It describes the first time someone with their spinal cord completely cut has been able to walk without assistance. Quote, I have not heard of any study where they have put in an implant into a patient with a complete spinal cord cut and demonstrated muscle movement and improving balance, enough to stand and walk. Ram Hariharan, a consultant at the Northern General Hospital in Sheffield, told the BBC. However, he added, we need more numbers of patients to show that it is safe and that it significantly enhances their lives. Only then can it be taken forward. Gregor Cortin, who led the team, says the work isn't a cure, but it is a critical step to improve people's quality of life. We are going to empower people. We are going to give them the ability to stand, to take some steps. It is not enough, but it is a significant improvement. Now, when you watch, you see the video, it. Some of these studies, whatever, what they're doing is giving people, like, let's say, an app on their phone, but it's, it might be a device, where they can start this implant and start giving them the signals. And I think that's how they begin doing their training and stuff, rehabilitation. But it seems, you know, fascinating to me. I'm going to continue. A brand new spinal cord. While the implant could offer a tremendous improvement for some paralyzed people, they still remain dependent on an exter- external device to walk. For a true cure, you would need to regenerate the spinal cord altogether. A team at Tel Aviv University appears to have done just that, albeit in mice. The team, led by Tal Devere, used engineered human stem cells to grow functional spinal cord tissues, essentially growing part of the spinal cord in the lab with a process that mimics how they grow in human embryos. Then, they implanted them in lab animals that had recent or long-term spinal cord injuries. According to the study, which they published in the Journal of Advanced Science, animals with both recent and chronic spinal injuries that have received spinal cord implants recovered major gains in walking ability. While it was successful in lab animals, there is still much work to do before it could work for humans. Eventually, the researchers hope to launch clinical, clinical trials in human patients. Our goal for the next few, few years is to engineer personalized spinal cord implants to repair tissue damage from injury without the risk of implant rejection, the researchers said in a statement. So, this will probably be a short one, but... This is just fascinating to me and provides a lot of hope. So, you know, not only do they know, because you always hear about um, implant rejections and stuff, a lot of breakthroughs here are coming from different departments that are just kind of merging. This happens a lot in neuroscience, I find, when, you know, you're mapping the, the brain and, you know, for the first time they're getting images of synapses firing and forming when you have ideas and like I said, I'm a nerd, and this is what, you know, gives me that awe-inspiring, you know, type of feeling and hope. Again, this is fascinating to me. And not only are they looking to put implants in people to... By the way, when you watch the video, it's pretty interesting. and Like, to give you the ability to start your implant to set the booster signals. And like this guy said, it's like a normal life almost. He walks, stands up. I mean... Then they talk about, you know, actually growing one. And that just boggles my mind. I've always thought, of, you know, one of, the, one of the greatest aspects of humans is the ability to overcome such things. And maybe there is a distinction between born without the ability to walk and having it taken away. So I guess there is some psychology maybe to that and... Probably yes, and I'm just too stoned to fucking, you know, really contemplate it, but you're born without the ability to walk, and how do you grow up, and who's around you, and what kind of person, what can you do? You see people do incredible things. No arms, no legs. You know, just uh, the whole gambit. 
and the ability to be to is taken away from you at some age. Like this guy had a motorcycle accident. Like I can only imagine in just you know, I guess uh, little training things you do where you try to put yourself in someone else's you know position in their you know in their shoes, so to speak. Where you're trapped in your body and you can't walk, you can't talk. If it was one of the scariest things I've ever come across in my life or, you know, witnessed uh, firsthand. And I didn't know how to really, you know, think about it or process it. Because I am here, you know, 51, seemingly healthy, a little overweight, but, you know. And what if my, you know, sight is taken away? Your, um, you know, your ability to walk. And it just is one of those frightening things. And for people right now sitting home, paralyzed, uh, spinal cord injuries. Is this a little hope? And is it not just, you know, clickbait stuff? And I hope that these are true things. I mean, I have a friend who will debate with me, and uh, I love her for that, that, you know, we easily fool ourselves with these type of things. But sometimes when I do these, uh, you know, type of things, I go to the link. So one of the links was regenerating the injured spinal cord at the chronic phase by engineered IPSC derived 3D neural networks. Now this is just like the abstract of the actual thing and that's part of the process. So when you look at one of these things, you go to look to see if the links are legit. Do they lead to an abstract or peer review studies? Is it real? And for that I can say yes and you know this is just awe inspiring to me. Again, the cosmos, um, physics, astrophysics, like all these theoretical physics, all these things, neuroscience, it, it is what makes me get hopeful and, you know, goosebumps and it makes my imagination run wild. And this is, you know, part of us as humans to overcome these things. And yeah, we might be able to have like world peace and homeless people being, you know, there's homeless people like, there's so many things you understand that, you know, need to be addressed. And when I see articles like this about reawakening the spine and all the things, you know, 50-something. So you go through life and you know people and you've been around people. And again, maybe I don't, you know, I'm not savvy enough to understand that distinction between being born without the ability and what you can overcome. And what happens when you're, you know... Moving around fully healthy, and all of a sudden you're in an accident and something happens to your spine. So, I hope an article like this will give people hope, but, you know, tone it down with the expectations of this is not right around the corner, and it at least is progress in a way. This is from March to 2022. Again, it's um, Spinal Cord Implants Help Paralyzed People Walk Again by Teresa Carey from the Freethink website. I'll post a link in the description. But again, I'll just wrap this up by saying this might be my short ones, but I love do, doing these. I miss doing these um, just to get on here and flub the English language. And, you know, it really gets me charged up. And maybe some people could look at it as a, you would get depressed or it would, you know, bring you down. But if I temper my expectations with, you know, some, you know, standard logic and expectations that, yeah, they are going to be clickbaitable titles and articles, but if you do a little bit of work and you do a little bit of research and you hit a couple of links, you make sure things are verified, you can see abstracts of, um, you know, growing these parts of the spinal cords and what they're doing with mice and this transplant working for, you know, somebody who had a motorcycle accident. And an implant transplant, it just really gave me a good feeling. And I hope that feeling transfers over and why I do some of these podcasts, but just think of the changes we can make in giving people the ability to walk again. I can't again, I can't imagine it the ability being taken away or just not having it to begin with. Um just I try, I'm trying to try to think how lucky I am in where I sit in this world right now, being able to navigated for 51 years and that people you meet 
the stories you hear. I mean, I was hit by a car when I was, I don't know, about seven, eight years old. I flew like 20 feet, hit the ground. And when I was in the hospital, I couldn't move my legs. I couldn't feel the bottom. And they were worried that something was happened to my spine. So for, you know, maybe my childlike brain made things worse, but it felt like for two weeks or so, I really thought I was paralyzed. And I had to lay on the couch and people, by the way, this is fucking insanity, but three, three of my friends, me, Patrick, and Frankie, ran out my friend's house. He, was, he lived on the first floor. So he had to go up the stairs, and we ran down the stairs, had a race, and raced across the street. I got hit in the center, flew 20 feet. My other friend um, got hit in the leg because he was slower, and the other friend just stopped and put his hands on the, the car. It was one of those things. I got a soccer ball. No, I didn't sue for millions of dollars. We didn't have any concept of that. I guess my mom and whatever. The guy brought me and my friends a soccer ball. By the way, I'm on the bed. I'm in the couch, paralyzed, or so I think. And I get a soccer ball. That's just fucking insanity. You know how many fucking lawyers I'd have right now? And Oh my god, anyway. I don't regret things like that, but... I as a child was like this, you know, in this period, and which again, maybe spurred my curiosity into these things about that, you know, ability to be taken away. And I don't, can't tell you how frightening it was as a child. Um, and then it slowly came back the ability and the happiness. And I didn't have to go through like rehabilitation. It was more like, it was probably like two days, <laughs> you know, now that I'm thinking about it, like, but, um, there you have it. Just, I am given such hope, uh, an awe-inspiring feeling, just the breakthroughs in technology as we humans strive to move forward. Meanwhile, the politicians are fucking, you know, governing women's vaginas and fucking sexual malady. Like, all these fucking things are just fucking mind-boggling to me. When there are decent humans in this world who do test me, they're trying to solve issues and... I'd like to highlight these things. So, again, this is reawakening the spine. It just fascinated me as an article and reminded me why I love doing these so much. And I hope you enjoyed it too. Again, the link will be in the description. And I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours.